Okay, I'm not gonna do the effects for that. That's just way too complicated. Oh wow, would you look at that? Those uh, those are VFX. I originally had more VFX shots, but uh, they didn't really turn out like I wanted. So I just kind of only inserted one. <laughs> uh, but you know, I was trying to do something new. You live and you learn what is and isn't good. So hey, at least I got that down. Hey everyone, today we're gonna be talking about how I made that. I'm how I made my Shang Chi cosplay. <clears throat> my voice, holy <clears throat> You know, maybe I'll bring it a little closer. Uh, yeah, that's good. There we go. So to start out making this cosplay, I needed a sort of base pattern. So what I did was I grabbed two shirts, just two old shirts, one long sleeve and one short sleeve. I cut off the sleeves of the short sleeve and you know, I cut halfway on the long sleeve. And you know, I just started marking everything, you know, cutting, you know, to make the seams look accurate. And you know, I just cut them apart to what I saw on reference photos the seams were. After that, I laid them on the floor as flat as I possibly could and took photos of them with a little coin as reference to size. And I imported those photos all into Photoshop so that I can make a sort of test pattern. And I printed those out and I just made a sort of mock-up shirt to see where things would go, you know, if it fit correctly, if I needed to alter anything, if I needed to add anything, which I did. And then when that was done, I altered the simpler patterns in Photoshop into more complex patterns. And what I mean more complex, I mean just adding a lot more detail, like all the lines and all the different armor pieces of where the different colors are and I separated them. When I was finally done, I just printed everything out and transferred them onto the fabric I used. So the fabric they used on set for the screen use suit is not at all what I did for this cosplay. The screen use suit used like fabric that had individually like scales glued onto it and for those who don't believe me here is a clip from the documentary about Shang-Chi. Carving all the scales and then molding hundreds and thousands and thousands of scales and in fact each suit has about 14,000 tiny individual scales glued onto it by hand by our team. That was on Disney Plus the new assembled episode because yeah, so it was individually like jeweled scales that had been glued on to the suit and I don't have the time or money to do that. So what I did was I used Liverpool bullet spandex because it kind of gave that similar sort of texture to it. It's not 100% the same in size or quality or shine, but you know, it gets the job done in giving that sort of you know, scaled look. It's not supposed to be like 100% accurate, but it's supposed to give the illusion of like scales. Also, it was like dirt cheap, so at least where I got it. For the darker red sections, what I did was I used some old, you know, red spandex I had laying over from older projects or just some fabric I didn't ever ended up using. I used that old spandex and painted it with some black and red puff paint mix because it is a darker red in the movie. So I use that paint on the texture and you know, it's again, it's not similar. I wish I had gone with a darker kind of fabric because you know, there are parts where it does shine over and it's not quite as accurate, but you know, I'm, I'm happy with what I did with it. So, you know, it's totally fine. Gosh, I feel like I'm sweating and I'm hot because I have to turn off the air and everything. Okay, so once all the pieces were painted, you know, I had to paint all these lines on and you know, I had to paint all the darker red sections. When that was done, I went on to sewing. Sewing was both really difficult and very easy. It was really difficult because I had all these little tiny details kind of just sew in and you know that's never really fun for me to do but it was also pretty easy because I was basically just sewing together two shirts and 
to get into these shirts, I use two different uh, systems. For the undershirt, I use a Velcro system, which is basically just a bunch of little Velcro pieces attached to the front, and they make these sort of panels of the suit. And then for the overshirt, or vest, if you want to call it, I sewed in a separating uh, red zipper so that I can kind of uh, get out and get into it without ruining the EVA foam pieces. And speaking of the EVA foam pieces, I had the idea of incorporating the infinite knot. So for these like black rubbery pieces that are on the suits, you know, on the shoulder, on the chest, the sides, the arms, and the the back, I just used craft foam and uh, it, it was cheap. I had it around and I was able to get this sort of pattern cut into the the craft foam by just cutting into it with a knife but not all the way through and then heating it up with a heat gun and you know that was able to get sort of a raised texture over everything and I really like the look of it. Yeah and again it's not 100% accurate because there's a sort of pattern over it on the screen use suit but I'm not, I wasn't going to spend that much time doing that so you know this will have to do and I think it looks just as good from far away. <laughs> Then originally I used super glue to glue down these spots, but that didn't work as well as the contact cement, which I used to glue everything else on. Contact cement was able to let it be sort of flexible and, you know, it just worked wonders. And, you know, I can do this with it. I can touch, scramble it. It works like a gem. I love contact cement. I was never able to use contact cement in Korea. Now that I'm here in America, I have access to it. And you know, I was able to make, you know, I was able to glue these pieces on. So that was great. And that's how I made the armor from uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but I still love what I was able to do with it. You know, there are a lot of things I would change but for now, this will have to do. And if you guys are wondering what I'm wearing, uh, you know, as pants and shoes go, uh, pants, I'm just wearing some black sweatpants and you know, the shoes, I don't have the money to spend on Jordans. I believe those are Jordan shoes. <laughs> I'm not really a big shoe guy, but maybe one day I'll, uh, I'll buy the shoes and you know, I can wear it with the whole ensemble. Now on to how I made the 10 rings. For the legendary 10 rings, I used a 3D file made by Mansfield Spidey. You know, check out his Instagram and also check out his Etsy store. That's where he's selling the, the files for these 10 rings. And you know, I think they're one of the best files out there for the 10 rings. And I printed all the 10 rings in various sizes to kind of emulate the sort of battle mode that goes on, like not the casual, like all the rings are sort of together on the arm, like down to the wrist, but rather they're going all the way up to like the elbow sort of look. I really like that look, so I'm just calling it battle mode. <laughs> and once I was done 3D printing them, I had to sand them. Then after sanding them, I had to use filler primer to fill in all the cracks I couldn't get and then I had to sand off the excess filler primer and then finally I just painted them red with some red Rust-Oleum spray paint. Why red? I, I kind of thought the red would look more in unison with everything with the suit. You know you can kind of look at that the red and the gold kind of fit better with this whole thing instead of like a bronze and blue that the actual rings sort of have. And after the gloss red was able to dry up I used a gold acrylic paint marker to paint basically everything that I didn't want red. And after that, I just hit it with a clear gloss. And you know, that's how I made these rings. I am super happy with them, but you know, I may go back one day and just make some more traditional rings. Cause even though I like these battle mode custom painted rings, I do want some like movie accurate rings. And you know, once I have the full suit on, I just gotta like slide some of these rings on or uh, excuse me, uh, magnetically attach them to each other. And you know, I have the whole ensemble together and it looks 
great. I'm super happy with the way it came out. And you know, there are small details about this cosplay that aren't accurate or, you know, are just slightly falling apart that I already know I'm gonna get comments on. And to that I say, shut the f up. I already know it's not 100% accurate and I already know that there are a bunch of flaws and mistakes in the suit. I don't care. I'm happy with what I was able to do with this cosplay without spending a lot of money. Literally, the only things I had to buy for this cosplay were the gold paint markers and the red bullet spandex fabric. That was the only things I needed to buy. Everything else I made or were given to me uh, in a trading kind of thing. So yeah, this was one of my cheapest cosplays. And you know, it looks so great for cheap. And you know, I'm happy with it. Together, all together, it just looks great. So yeah guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, you know, knowing and learning and seeing how I made my Shang-Chi cosplay. You know, uh, once you're done with this video, go ahead and watch Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings on Disney Plus and watch the assembled documentary on how they made Shang-Chi. I already did this morning. You know, I thought it was fantastic. I'm gonna watch it again because I love it so much. You know, this is my first cosplay that's a Marvel character and that's actually Asian. It's a big deal for me and probably other people out there. If you guys want to make a Shang-Chi cosplay like I did, go into the description and you'll see my template on my Etsy store. You know, you can buy that, make one like I did or make one even better than I did. And you know, send me photos if you use my template. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, yeah, Shang-Chi.